Good afternoon, my friends. This is Paul, and we're finally on the home stretch as far as my Facebook notes for the mission trips. As I didn't want to write out a full note for 2018's camp, so to make up for it, I took an existing note that I made where I ranked various things on the mission trip, like best air conditioning, best food, etc., and just updated it with 2018 stuff in there. To summarize, 2018 was the year that I had the miraculous healing and was the associate staff member, but there wasn't a whole lot of other memorable stuff besides those. And besides, I vlogged about it on YouTube so you can see it for yourself. So I figured this would make up for it. And for those of you in my Myers-Briggs audience, can you think of a more introverted, sensing-y type of video than compartmentalizing past experiences like this? So in the original note, I listed which year was which place. So what I'm going to do for the sake of you guys is I'm going to do that, but I'm also going to list briefly what the big thing of that camp was so you can put it in your minds of, oh, okay, that was that year. Okay. So 2010 was in Rockford, Illinois. That was when I had the girls and the big hug that changed my life. 2011 was Prince Frederick, Maryland, that was the year that I was just by far in the best of spirits, skipping through the halls, telling everyone Jesus loves them, and got to talk to the girls about Harry Potter. 2012 was Greensboro, North Carolina. The Minnesota people returned, and the legendary Andy was like my temporary BFF. 2013 was Fremont, Nebraska, or as they called it, Omaha, Nebraska. And that was the year that initially was a letdown, but I learned to love it. And that was also the legendary Basil Marceau prank. 2014 was Oil City, Pennsylvania. That was the beautiful mess camp where we had the Jesus boxes and the Bohemian Rhapsody. 2015 was Charleston, South Carolina. The less we talk about that camp, the better. But to, to its credit, I did get a hug from a Greek mythologist boy who ended up feeling very respected and that was also the year I helped a girl feel safe when the time came for her to die. Not that she died while we were there, but you know what I'm trying to say. 2016 was Champaign, Illinois. That was the year of Operation Sister Smile. And finally, 2018 was Morganton, North Carolina, where I was an associate staff member and had the miraculous healing. So without further ado, let's get into the ranking. The best facility, 2018, had us housed at the North Carolina School for the Deaf, which felt more like being at a hotel than a campsite. We had two co-ed lounges, three guys-only lounges, all of the adult males got our own beds, and the air conditioning was great. I'm pretty sure no one would question this camp taking the top spot. I even have pictures of the lounge. Best Musician Improv, 2010's Guitar Hip Hop, performed by the legendary Popple. When they announced it, it sounded like a crazy thing, but they managed to pull it off really nicely. So we came up with a little acoustic hip hop song. If you guys want to help us out, we'll Best Food 2018 
lots and lots of iced tea made up for an overall low quality meal that was satisfactory simply because we were at a mission trip. You have to go on one to know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you tend to eat pretty much whatever you can find on mission trips just because all that working builds up an appetite. I think before I updated this note, I had said 2012 because that was the year that we had fudge bars. Me loving iced tea bumped it up for 2018. Best Group Keepsake, 2012's Half Cross Necklace. The girl I gave mine to went into the convent, so I hope she kept it. That was uh, Andy, whose name has changed now that she's in the convent. And that was my way of saying you are the most influential person I met at the camp. So I hope she remembers that. Best Campers, 2011. Yeah, I was, I, I practically was just... Wherever I went, there were people that either wanted to talk to me or needed to know that God loved them, and with all the Harry Potter uh, hype, because Deathly Hallows Part 2 was about to come out the same weekend that we were ending the camp, there was, it was pretty easy to start a conversation with those people. Best Work Project. I wrote on here that it was 2014, but I'm going to make an addendum here and say... I think 2018 was actually the best because that was the year I was, excuse me, that was the year that I was an associate staff member and I felt like that felt like a work project because I would do stuff like cutting up the tomatoes, preparing the meals, washing the dishes, cleaning the tables, sweeping the floor. It did feel like work, especially because I work as a janitor right now and it felt very similar. And I also really liked my work team. Here's a picture. And we got to go to the sites, and even though it seems like it's not that big of a deal to you guys, it was the most fulfilling job I had ever done as a chaperone, by far. Although what I wrote on here was actually 2014 at Jody's house, which was the house where we had the miraculous healing, and I can see where I was going with that. Least pre-camp problems, 2018. Going in simply to allow God to work through me, rather than trying to sort through a bunch of issues on the side, was refreshing. I also never cried and was hardly ever miserable. Too bad 2015 was the exact opposite and may have been the sole reason why I was so deep in depression. It at least got me to realize I was in depression. Whether I had had it before then or not is uncertain, but the the guys on in my parish group certainly noticed that my spirits were drooping from 2012 onward so that might have been when it started best showers 2018 we had the showers in our bedroom there's not even a competition most convenient facility 2016 St. Thomas More High School was perhaps the definition of convenience for a CHWC facility. With an adoration chapel for silent reflection, an entire stage devoted to snacks, a selfie booth, and straightforward hallways, 2016's camp not only made getting around easy, but it also made one feel like they were the height of cool, especially during our free time in the cafeteria. I know I said 2018 was the overall best facility, but I think what I meant was in terms of comfort, it was the best. Because it doesn't fit the convenience label because there were a lot of stairs and elevators that were pretty tiring when you were already tired out, so it wasn't as convenient. Best weather, 2014. When most mission trips were in the 90s, and I think they also got to the 100s in the first one, it was refreshing when most mornings were actually quite cold, and even the hottest days were like spring weather. Some of the girls were even wearing hoodies and jeans, and that's saying something because usually they're in short shorts and short sleeve shirts. Best audience participation, 2015's indoor snowball fight. Yeah, dancing and synchronized waving is fun, but who can resist having an epic brawl with fake snowballs in the summertime? <laughs> of all the flack I give 2015, it did have really good evening programs, and that indoor snowball fight was definitely one of the highlights. Best four corners, 2010. 
Not only was this the highlight of my CHWC experience, but it was also the highlight of my life. That was the Four Corners where I got the 12-way hug from the girls, and that got me to realize that I should stop being sexist and maybe females were worth a darn. Best Light Show, 2018. The mere fact that I could actually lift my shoulders without feeling any pain because I had just been miraculously healed two days prior... And seeing Molly and Connor dancing with their crutches made an otherwise strange end to the camp endearing because it connected our minds with the Eucharist? I don't know what I meant by minds. I think it meant that the three of us were the people that had been miraculously healed. Them, it wasn't as big of a deal, but Molly and Connor had gotten into a really bad accident where Connor broke his foot and Molly... Uh, got some glass lodged in her leg and so it caused them to both go to the hospital and we were told that they probably wouldn't be able to come back to the camp but yet they did and we believe that it was because we prayed over them during Eucharistic adoration and Jesus was able to heal them from a distance so Molly came back on Wednesday Connor came back on Thursday and again even though they were in crutches they still managed to do some dances and so that's why I meant we were connected by the Eucharist, because we all had miraculous healings from Tuesday night. Um, unfortunately, I will not be doing push-ups on stage. <laughs> um, but I'm Molly, as Father said, and I'm sure you guys all heard about like the accident that happened on Tuesday. Um, to just summarize, I, uh, a mirror fell into the back of my calf. I cut my calf muscle and the coating around my Achilles tendon, so I did have to get surgery. And this is my wonderful mother right here, but she was all the way in Chicago when this happened. And um, I found out at the hospital after waiting for like five hours with um, minimal pain meds and really not any bandages that I would need surgery. I've never had surgery before. And the idea of going under anesthesia really freaked me out. So um, I got kind of hysterical at that point, and it might have been the exhaustion, and it was also the fear. And um, crying and just looking as ugly, I think, as I've ever looked. <laughs> and then Father came in after a little bit, and I was so happy to see him. And um, I confessed how, how terrified I was, um, just like the fear of going under, and like maybe the possibility of never waking up again. And just the thought of surgery really freaked me out. And um, he told me, um, this is how I encountered Jesus, through Father. Um, he told me to envision the surgery as um, when I go under, I'm being held in the palm of God's hand. And he would just hold me there and cradle me. And then the great physician would um, fix up my, my calf and everything. And as soon as he told me that, um, Maybe it was a little bit like Paul. I felt just peace rush over me, and I started bawling my eyes out even more, which was not possible, I don't think, because I was already crying so much. But um, that's how I encountered Jesus. When I went actually into the operating room, um, I felt so at peace. Could have been the drugs, but I don't know. <laughs> but I just want to say um, thank you, Father, for everything you've done for me these past couple of days. Thank you, everyone, for all of your prayers. I really did feel the strength that you guys gave me. And um, hopefully Con Connor's supposed to be discharged today, so hopefully we can see him later today. And um, God is good all the time. All the time. God bless you and continue to bless all of us. Best mascot, 2011's Candyman. Hey, the guy throws out candy when we answer his trivia questions. I can only think of one mascot that could top that. Little Caesar, if he threw pizza into the audience. That would be messy. I probably didn't think that line through. Most mind-blowing thing we saw on the stage, the Jesus boxes in 2014. Mainly because we didn't know what to expect. They were just drawing scribbles on boxes, and then they unscrambled them. It's one thing to see a picture of it and say, eh, yeah, that's an that's a okay drawing. But it's another when you're seeing them while they're being drawn and don't know what's being drawn. So the spontaneity factor is sadly something I can't really replicate to you guys. But I hope you'll try to like envision yourself in 2014 Paul's mindset and try to like be mind blown as I was.
Most mind-blowing video shown, 2012's The Chosen Generation poem. Check it out for yourself on YouTube and see if you'll be wowed as much as we were. You could hear the amazement like the wave. God cares for you? No. The truth is, God doesn't care about people. I refuse to believe that we can hope in him. Can't you see that the fighting, the hate, the violence will one day extinguish his followers? Make no mistake, to truly lead them, a loving God wouldn't allow mankind to suffer so much. What causes so many to believe in him? Foolishness. It is foolishness. Won't God continue to ignore the evil things men do? God can't hear us. You're wrong when you say God can. But I know we can fix things on our own. Don't be fooled into thinking God cares. Or maybe it's time to look at things another way. God cares. Don't be fooled into thinking we can fix things on our own, but I know God can. You're wrong when you say God can't hear us. The evil things men do continue to ignore. God won't. Foolishness? Is it foolishness to believe in him? What causes so many to suffer so much? Mankind wouldn't allow a loving God to truly lead them. Make no mistake, his followers will one day extinguish the fighting, the hate, the violence. Can't you see that we can hope in him? I refuse to believe that God doesn't care about people. No, the truth is, God cares for you. Most mind-blowing skit, 2014's baggage skit. It took me all the way back to my first mission trip. I don't think I described the baggage skit in my note, but basically there was this uh, one of the female staff members was acting out a girl that was like burdened by a whole bunch of problems and so she had a bunch of backpacks and bags all over herself and she started crying in such a convincing way that it literally took me back to how I felt on my first mission trip and she just said I can't take it anymore God take it away and then she just dropped everything and said and you know what he does best snack table 2018 I say that because of the iced tea alone, though the fruit snacks and granola bars were great as well. 2010 was probably a good runner-up because that had the dill pickle flavored Pringles. Best Outdoor Scenery, 2014. It's pretty hard to beat trees surrounding the main school, a five-minute walk through the quaint town of Oil City, a college on top of a hill, and a gazebo with a gorgeous pond that looked stunning at night. We never actually got to go into the gazebo, but it was nice to know it was there. True, the long walk kind of cheats a bit, but even with one building in itself, it gives the rest of the camps solid competition. Best Sleep, 2018. Whether we were staying at Sacred Heart Cathedral on the way there, on the way back, or the individual bed I received at the camp itself, I slept mostly soundly and never felt like I didn't get enough sleep. I think it helped that I was an associate staff member, and so we were given much longer periods of rest and recreation than the adults that were on actual work teams on site. So like when I was finished with my duties, I'd get like five hours to just chill to myself. And with all that heat, all I wanted to do was sleep to get back my energy. And so I was really, really grateful that my final mission trip managed to not make me feel like I was dead tired like the other ones did. Best Music 2016. Not to be confused with Best Musicians. That's a different category. Similar to my original note saying that 2014's camp had too many new songs, 2016 was a nice mix, but PJ Anderson went beyond just providing great music. He sounded and looked like he genuinely loved being there especially when he encouraged the campers to run forward toward the stage and see him up close. His lyrics were also shockingly powerful, especially forgiveness is like a fortress that takes away the pain. You became like me So I could see more like you The world as it should be the way that you created it to be Where beauty is beyond what we can show 
And hatred is a burden we don't know And mercy, mercy, it's sweet like the summer rain Forgiveness is a fortress that takes away our pain And joy is ever flowing through our hearts Your love is like a love we've never known And the catchy, Your Grace is Amazing. I put that one on YouTube at least. Your Grace is Amazing Most memorable music. Oh, most memorable music. I see. It's popple. Enough said. Yeah. PJs may have been more powerful, but popple managed to play songs like the Contra Code and I Love Peanut Butter Sandwiches, which were so memorable that we even sang along to those instead of PJ songs on the ride back from Champagne. The disrespect. Wow. If I don't say it later, I would also say Popple was the, well, I think I already said PJ Anderson was the best musician, but Popple was definitely the most memorable and also the funniest. Up, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, select, start. Up, up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, select, start. I used to play Contra on my cousin Mike's Nintendo. Cousin Mike, cousin Mike, cousin Mike had Nintendo. I liked the game, cause it didn't matter. My reaction time was so slow. Kyle had poor motor skills when he was nine. We knew a code to get unlimited lives. He could live forever. I thought if this was real, it sure would be nice. It'd be sweet. I'd be a superhero because of this code I know. Tell me, Kyle, how'd that code go? It went up, up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, select, start. Up, up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, select, start. Best Spontaneous Preaching on the Work Site, 2013. Not only did it flow smoothly, but Rachel kept asking for more... I just said more, but... <laughs> I think I meant more amazing stories about Jesus, more ways in which Jesus really changed my life, and so on. And it made for one of the most shockingly awesome stage presentations later that week, because yeah, Rachel said she uh, saw God through me at that camp, and that made me happy. Best spontaneous preaching moment at the camp, Operation Sister Smile in 2016. Asking people to write words of encouragement to my sister was the sole reason I went on that camp, and I'm glad to say that it was a success, as I phoned my sister and she said she was amazed at how many people understood her when she actually got to read the words. Best Spontaneous Preaching Overall 
2011 offered way too many opportunities to talk about God on the spot almost everywhere I went. It's just a shame that talking about God as part of the structure would have to wait four more years. I'm referring to pre-programmed prayer services in 2015, where I was literally asked to talk about God and Four Corners, but I'm pretty sure that's somewhere on this list elsewhere. Best Free Day, 2016. We saw the fireworks on the 4th of July, and while the location was boring, just outside of a bank... I was finally able to realize my long-time desire to have our free day before the camp truly got started as a way of building up to the grand finale. Hey, I Best other t-shirt I saw, a Hunger Games shirt in 2013. I called her the girl on fire, despite that she's actually not that familiar with the franchise. Best Daily Mass, 2016. Father Jeff's Five Truths homily in 2011 was so memorable that he even repeated it in 2012 and 2016. But since I missed the last Mass in 2012, I was honored that Father Jeff would give his homily one more time, and it would become a frequent saying of the campers whenever certain parts of the week were rough. Yeah, that was definitely a thing where... We would say, you're not important, and we'd get back, well, you're going to die. <laughs> Best Adoration, 2018. Even those of you that aren't Catholic probably already knew that going into that, because again, that's the miraculous healing. Pretty much everyone else agreed with me, as it was very powerful to have a cloth below the cloth below the monstrance to keep things proper, to be available for touching and even kissing it, that was bad sentence structure. And by kissing it, I was healed of my back and shoulder pains and even got to do 10 push-ups on the stage in front of everyone to prove it. <coughs> time activity, hiking in 2010, though only afterwards what is, was I told it was forbidden. Best sleeping quarters, 2018. I know I already mentioned that this year marked best sleep, but the room itself was also great. Having a personal closet, desk, and bed, as well as a shower-bathroom hybrid that didn't require walking all over the grounds or taking a bus. And it had air conditioning that we could adjust, too. Best evening weather and atmosphere, 2011. Conveniently, it was evening when the hug and the rain took place, too. Yeah, it was just really nice during the nighttime. Whereas other other camps, the evening weather was like spring weather. It didn't feel super cool. Also, 2011 was the year that we had the thunderstorm. And that's when the hug and the rain took place. That's probably why I put it on there. Best adult skit. 2010's He's Not Choking, He's Dead skit. I believe I laughed so hard that I cried. Boy, do I wish I had recorded that. But part of it got on the summary DVD, so I can at least relive some of the movements, even if I can't relive what they said. Best Group Skit, 2011's Ragman Skit. It's a very unique perspective on how Jesus carried not only our sins, but our sufferings on the cross. Best Catchphrase, You Are a Beautiful Mess, in 2014. It's great when the introverted folks in our group couldn't think of an adequate affirmation, so the camp's theme masterfully did the work for them. Best Stage Activity 2011's Pickup Lines, way before they became super awkward and inappropriate in 2015. The highlight? They call me John, but you can call me tonight. Best Carpenter Commandos 2011 
the firework mimicking was one of the funniest comedy acts short of the Three Stooges. He also had a similar haircut to Curly's. So what I meant by that was there was a moment in the summary DVD when one of the Carpenter Commandos was looking to himself in the mirror and he was lip syncing the words to Katy Perry's firework while also like doing motions and stuff like that. It's been a really long time since I've seen that summary DVD, so I don't remember exactly what he did. But, like, I also saw another summary DVD of another camp that did it. I forgot the occasion. And I was like, he did all right, but the one at our camp by far did it the best. I also loved how, at the end how he looked behind him, saw the camera, and then ran away. Best thing I did on the stage, when I spoke about the hug in the rain in 2011, it was the only team report that year to get a round of applause, and they even captured it on the summary DVD, words and all. I never did discover who the girl was, though. Best Summary DVD, 2011. Besides the aforementioned Hug in the Rain speech, it, was, it also featured hilarious bonus features and was overall the most joyful to watch, one of them being mimicking firework. Another one was a girl trying to stuff as many uh, gummy worms into her mouth as possible. I would say that 2014's was also pretty good, because that was the year when they played the song. Oh gosh, I can't remember what it was. But like, throughout the camp, they would ask the teens and adults to just randomly burst out in dancing. And I was the one that closed out the video. I did like that and they did it in slow motion when I did that part to like make it dramatic and somehow even though none of us knew what the context was it fit perfectly with the music they ended up playing in the background. Best staff credits 2012 when they spoke not sung spoke the words of call me maybe in extremely flat voices. The highlight, Ryan Beck, who is at least 6365, six, give or take, saying in a very deep and monotone voice, And all the other boys try to chase me, but here's my number, so call me, maybe. And then walks into the icebox. I threw a wish in the well. Don't ask me, I'll never tell. I looked to you as it fell. And now, you're in my way. I'd trade my soul for a wish, pennies and dimes for a kiss. I wasn't looking for this, but now you're in my way. Your stare was holding, ripped jean skin was showing, hot night wind was blowing. Where do you think you're going, baby? Hey, I just met you, and this is crazy. But here's my number, so call me Amy. It is hard to look right at you, baby. But here's my number, so call me, maybe. Hey, I just met you. But this is crazy. Here's my number. Call me, maybe. And all the other boys try and chase me, but here's my number, so call me, maybe. Before you came into my life, I missed you so bad. I missed you so bad. I missed you so, so bad. Before you came into my life, I missed you so bad, and you should know that I missed you so, so bad. Hey, I just met you. This is crazy, but here's my number, so call me, maybe. Before you came into my life, I missed you so bad, and you should know that. So call me. Best Cafeteria, 2016. Not only was the cafeteria so cold that I actually shivered, but it was also a genuinely amazing room and felt cool to spend free time in. Best DVD Feature, 2013's Message to the Next Camp. It was quite cool that myself, my brother, and his then-girlfriend, now wife, all got to be filmed, though at separate times. 
I kind of wish the staff member filming me had waited until my hair dried, though, because I literally just stepped out of the shower when she said, Hey, you want to be in the DVD? So just in case you didn't read or watch my 2013 Facebook note, uh, the staff members filmed five of us. Um, three of the five are now related to each other, me, my brother, and my sister-in-law. And we got to talk about like how we felt at the start of the camp and then how we felt near the end of it. And we got to give like pointers to the next camp that the staff members went to. And I remember what I said, which was, Jesus sweated blood in the Garden of Gethsemane, so surely you can all sweat a little bit of water. Just like encourage the teenagers that even if it's hot, you can like give it to Jesus. Best lunchtime, 2014, when Jody's mother allowed us to use her dining room and instead of the usual CHWC food, we were treated to some of the most extravagant meals ever. It was unanimously decided that we would report this as where we saw God that week, which we did, until the concrete story came along a few years later and we deeply regretted CHWC's timing. Well, at least until the next point. Best team report, the concrete story in 2014. I'm amazed that Jeff could sneak onto the stage despite not being a team reporter and yet still make it onto the summary DVD. So yeah, Jeff was like, hey, we spoke too early. We're going to fix that. And he just got on the stage, took the microphone, and <laughs> started telling the story. Best possibility that never happened. A candlelit program in 2015. If only the power had waited just a little bit longer to come back on. Best dance party, 2011. I really went all out dancing, having plenty of sweat in my hair, getting into a lot of trains, and really busting out the moves. Subsequent years usually had me all the way in the back. And to put into perspective how great that dance party was, if you were to watch the summary DVD, literally every single person, except for Andy, he just stood there, was like going wild on the DVD. You could really tell that besides Andy, every single person was really into it and they just were having the time of their lives. Best Taco Tuesday, 2012. Taco Tuesday was always a big deal. But there was even a song about it this year, and plenty of people had their Taco Tuesday shirts for the occasion and donned fake mustaches and sombreros. The hype for Taco Tuesday never even came close to that year. Best Overnight Stay, 2018. Man, Sacred Heart Cathedral treated us like celebrities. We got a children's playroom to have fun with the dinosaurs. Then we had the entire school to ourselves on the way back. Best collection of signatures, 2012, because I like to carry a notebook around with me at all the camps so that I won't forget the people there. I believe I got 66 signatures from that camp alone, even from teens that took my book and signed it without me being aware of it. And I didn't actually know most of them, but believe me, word spread quickly at these camps. Best overall camp turnout. 33 people from our Sacred Heart group alone and 330 people altogether in 2015. CHWC encourages there to be about 300 people, so that was really stretching the limits of how much people they were able to hold. Charleston must have been a popular camp choice all, all over the U.S.? Why did I say that? Best theme, Beautiful Mess in 2014. It was motivational, catchy, and inspired by a homily Pope Francis gave to young people. So, uh, Beautiful Mess was not only the best theme, but I think it was probably the most fun to actually sing the theme song. Not the best theme song, we're getting to that in the next thing. But it was just so much fun to be a beautiful mess. It, it's just fun. Yes, it's for teenagers, but... I'm able to put aside my adult self and act silly at these camps.
best theme song, Zeroing In, in 2012. When CHWC switched to a more rocking style for their theme songs, my brother Matthew couldn't resist downloading it onto his iPod because it really got us pumped for some epic service at that camp. Best Team Building Activities 2014 Our group already had some solid chemistry, as Emmy, Justin, and I knew each other, and CHWC tries not to get people that know each other on the work team, so that's saying something. And Jeff and Logan knew as each other, yet as a whole, we probably bonded the quickest from the, these activities than any other year. And we also bonded quite nicely during the subsequent work days. Jeff also told us some fascinating stories, and they were so interesting that he got his own section in my official note. Best Group T-Shirt, 2014. Making our names into a cross shape on the back is pure genius, and on the front it had paint spilled all over with beautiful mess written in the paint. Best Affirmations, 2011. Not counting having a bulging affirmation envelope, this would be the last time CHWC officially did this during my six years, but some of the things said to me at this camp touched me in ways that other camps wouldn't even come close. Most convenient transportation to and from the camp, 2015. Having a bus had its downsides, but having vans would probably have been even more stressful and miserable. At the very least, both the adults and teenagers would be equally exhausted, as very few of us had a good sleep during our through-the-night ride to South Carolina with very few stops. Plus, whatever problems I had, I simply love remembering that bus atmosphere in my head, because I had been to March for Life on the bus on several occasions, and so I just loved that nostalgia of being like, oh boy, I'm on a bus again! Best gift shop item, 2011's epic shirt. Even though I made that phrase popular well before the camp, ironically, even though this shirt and the word epic have pretty much become synonymous with me at any major event, it's actually for other reasons that most people remember me. Although, lately, there's a lot of people that associate the word epic with me whenever they hear it. Best Air Condition, 2010. When it's early July and insanely hot weather and you are shivering after exiting the shower, you know that the air conditioning can't get any better, especially on my very first mission trip. Best Greeting, 2011. The writhing helium man always made us feel welcomed and honored upon entering CHWC, though they sadly took him away in 2015, and 2011 seemed to go all out. Not only was, in my, I, not only was I in my, I can't believe I'm finally back, mood, that only comes from a second time experience, but the camp really did turn out to be as epic as we expected it. Best program area, 2015. This camp school was a truly awful layout, with even the camp managers getting confused, and some of the most boring architecture I've ever seen, but at least the program area was one of a kind, with most camps just setting up a few chairs in a gym. This one featured that type of seating where it gradually went further up and made everything seem more exciting, so more like an amphitheater. And boy did we need that extra space, as this was also the biggest crowd of any CHWC I went to. Least complaining. <laughs> what a category. 2014. Generally, there's a certain amount of reluctance at any mission trip, such as complaining about the water in the showers being too cold, or saying, that, or the girls saying that their legs are too hairy, or that the weather is too hot. Thankfully, I don't remember any of that in Oil City, so it was great to have a super positive work team that I didn't constantly have to say the sweater the better to. Best classroom prank when John Prank called Basil Marceau in 2015, and then he got away with it again in 2014. My cheeks hurt from laughing so hard. John putting the deodorant in the ceiling in 2010 came pretty close, though. It would also win the award for Best Johnism. Best Indoor Worksite Scenery, 2013's Child Care Center. All of those circular designs on the rugs, the colorful walls, plenty of toys all over the place, and even a nice grassy area out front to have lunch on made for a work project 
that was soothing on the eyes and mostly spared us from Nebraska's humid weather. Best outdoor worksite scenery, 2012's Coppertop Ranch. This place was simply too big to be allowed as a work project. It featured horses, a huge soccer field, a massive lawn, some gorgeous gardens, another huge field, and finally a large forest that we had to clear out to the best of our ability and time. There's nothing like hiking and working at the same time to get the adrenaline pumping. Best Resident Night, 2014. Besides having our resident appear in the summary DVD, it was equally awesome to have her, her children, her mother, and her grandparents all at the same camp. I mean, four generations in one room? That's pretty rare in and of itself. But to have it at one camp in Pennsylvania, someone tell me I'm not dreaming. Best alternative to the mission trip. Oh boy, that was a long one I wrote. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 happened to be released in the theaters Friday night of our 2011 mission trip. Pretty much everyone at that camp was obsessed with Harry Potter, and most of us seriously considered sneaking out and watching the midnight premiere. Thankfully, the movie turned out wonderfully when we finally did get the time to watch it afterwards, but the mission trip was much better. Most pop- or best- popular song. What I mean by that is best song that wasn't like written by one of the musicians and that was like public domain. To the Races in 2013. It was awesome enough to have an orchestra piece at CHWC, but in that year's adult skit they asked us to pretend to perform the orchestra. The only thing CHWC could have possibly played that's better than this are some orchestral pieces from my favorite video games, such as the Gusty Garden Galaxy. <laughs> Best Praise and Worship Song, Oceans, in 2018. It's my favorite church song, now sung with 205 other people, give or take. Best Overall Evening Programs, 2015, believe it or not. However, the questionable emotional maturity of many audience members made some of the best things on the stage, including two incredible throwbacks, turn into some of the most grown and cringe-inducing things CHWC has ever done on the stage. To put this into perspective why it was so great, 2015 had the indoor snowball fight, the return of the pickup lines, the return of the how to pray skit, and Gregisms. Did I mention Gregisms already? Yeah, whenever Greg got on the stage, he always stole the show. So yeah, no competition there. Best Evening Program Pacing 2018 may not have had the most memorable moments on the stage, but they seemed to really nail the structure. 
knowing when to stop being silly, not drag anything out for too long, and keeping the skits brief. Four Corners prep was kind of long, but that's just one program out of several amazingly paced evenings. Best Parish Group Activities, 2011. I don't remember too many of them, but I do remember both John and Mr. Core giving me some wonderful affirmations, and when I asked to pray over Katie, I compared her to a tree. Thankfully, she took it just right, unlike what I said to her when she put on the T-Rex mask at the prior mission trip, because I had said, Katie, you better not put on that mask or the next person that wears that will feel your facial grease. <laughs> Best Group Reunion, Minnesota's group in 2012. Yeah, there might have been 93 of them, not all of which I knew, but there's no denying it was flat out awesome to bolt into their midst and find at least four people to hug. Just in case you forgot, Minnesota's group was also there in 2011, so it was cool to have them two years in a row. 2012 was also the year that I re-met Andy, the, the female one. Andy apparently knew me in the previous camp, but she was in a really bad state of mind the previous year and so didn't talk to me a whole lot because I guess she was sorting through some spiritual stuff, but boy did she get over it at 2012's camp because nearly every moment when we weren't at the work sites or in like the guys slash girls only zones, we were trying to talk to each other as much as possible and I gave her my half cross necklace. And now she's in the convent, so she actually took her faith seriously. What do you know? Best new edition, pre-program prayer services in 2015. Finally, my spontaneous style of teaching the teenagers about the faith became part of the program. So, yeah, they even announced, like, Paul is going to be giving a speech tonight. Hope you go to it. I got six teenagers that came to my program, which was incredible because it was the very first one, um, which I say that in the very next line. And if that wasn't cool enough, this was the very first camp, not just the year, the camp that this happened. And I was also appointed the official progress reporter for the CHWC directors as to whether they should pursue this concept at future camps. So in a manner of speaking, my teaching and evaluations made CHWC history. I don't think they liked it too much because they never brought it back. It's one of only three memories at 2015's camp that were beyond epic and made it worth going, despite its misery in almost every other way. So I specifically got to talk about Four Corners, because in, sub in previous years, the youth group leaders wouldn't want to say too much about it to avoid getting the teenagers' expectations up. But I was actually asked, tell the teenagers what Four Corners is and help them be prepared for it. Now, granted... Pre-programmed prayer for services weren't exclusively marketed towards teenagers. Anyone could go to them. But when I went to the other ones, it was exclusively adults, and the subject matter was much heavier. I guess you could say, like, teenagers need things more lighthearted. And there was stuff like praying about the exam, and there was a Bible study. Not typically the kind of things you would normally see at Catholic Heart. But mine was the... Well, I didn't go to the one on Thursday night, so I can't speak for that, but mine was the only one of the three I went to where it was exclusively teenagers that came. I guess just the idea of, one, it was me, and two, it was about four corners was really appealing, and one of the girls that came to my module actually did want to be prayed over by me that night, so I would like to think that maybe me doing the presentation helped ease her nerves a little bit. And the fact that this was poorly advertised made it even more incredible that I got f six people to come because it wasn't even on the camp agenda because it was like shoved in there at the last minute. So the only way the teenagers would have remembered that it happened was one, they announced it on stage that morning saying, hey, tonight's pre program prayer for services is all about Four Corners and Paul is presenting. Or word just spread because I would say like, hey guys, I'm doing a program tonight. Hope you'll be there. Overall, best part of CHWC, Four Corners. Four Corners has always been the highlight of the camp, often the highlight of my year. And in the case of my very first one, the highlight of my life. Granted, 2014's was easily the worst since the buildup was too long and the actual Four Corners was too short. But even that was beyond phenomenal. No camp was perfect nor was I expecting perfection, but Four Corners was always too good to be true. 
and I wish I could describe how it feels, but it truly felt, especially during the 2010 and 2013 trips, that I could legitimately feel the Holy Spirit moving through the room. At one point, I even felt like the Holy Spirit was like brushing over my hair. He was so powerful. I added one more category after the fact. I wanted to add that meeting Amanda in 2016 was the best staff member because somehow I forgot to put that down. And we met again at NCYC, so that was super cool. She would always like be so personal. Like She would say, yo, Paul, tell me what you guys did at the work project and how are you enjoying the camp so far? I have a conspiracy theory that the reason she did that was because she was told ahead of time that I wanted to be an associate staff member and therefore if I had gotten that position she would have been my co-worker and we would have probably worked together on a few projects and I think to make up for it she was extra friendly to me because she was like hey Paul I know you wanted to like work with me and you get to work with teenagers instead so I'm gonna be super friendly it could just be that that's just the personality she had but if my conspiracy theory is correct then that was surprisingly genuine of her and it actually like as I'm saying that it makes me appreciate her more so yay for me retroactively appreciating someone I met so thank you very much for watching let me know uh, what you thought what were some of your favorite moments and what were some of the biggest surprises? Let me know if there was anything I said about 2015 where you were like, something good happened that year? <laughs> Thank you to my patrons, Matthew Rakowski, Spoon Ghost, Splat Cat, and Scooter Doodle for their financial contributions on Patreon. And until the next time, remember to keep the faith, stay epic, and God bless. Bye!